Hello and welcome to the weather update for September 14th, 2023. And it was a nice day after we got rid of some morning clouds, but you can see what's coming. There's Lee right there offshore. Look at all that. It's really going to be, we're, we're, you can see how close, it's such a big storm. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But let's first get to today's weather, first of all. Uh, we did have a nice clear day, so uh, let's go after after we after the clouds cleared out later in the morning. So you can see here we had the clear sky over us, pretty much kind of warm out there, upper 70s. And there is Lee right there. Look at how big Lee is. Again, even if it goes due north, look at the west. Look at how close that edge is going to come toward us. And this, by the way, is Margaret over here. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, this is a big big storm, and it's still a hurricane as well. Uh, but uh, let's talk about what we had today. First of all, you can see, let's go to the ma weather and hazards map, and you'll see it looks like we've got a gale warning in effect for just east of Long Island. we got the high surf advisory uh, and a f coastal flood advisory in effect. That's going to go to Sunday morning. Uh, and let's look at uh, the Cape here. It looks like tropical storm warning is in effect for this whole area. Um, no hurricane warning? Hurricane watch issue, so they don't think they still don't think it's going to be a hurricane the time it gets here. I guess I don't know, being a little too conservative in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, um, take a look at what we got outside right now. It's going to be a cool night tonight. I might actually be able to turn off the air conditioner. Maybe it's still 70 in the alley, but maybe it will drop a little more. 66 at Islip, 2.54. So uh, you can see the uh, air has dried out. Uh, Throughout the day, so taking a look at what the day was like at Islip, you can see we had the cloud, little clouds in the morning, and then it cleared out. Uh, and uh, the temperature is generally in the upper 70s. We got into the upper 70s uh, with dew points pretty low. Uh, the dew points dropped a little more as we got toward later in the day. We've seen generally north winds at Islip. Um, oddly enough, though, if you were in New Jersey, let's get Lakehurst up here. Uh, that's NJ. I guess they don't have an actual ASO site. All right, well, I'm gonna try. I gotta try and find Belmore Farmingdale here. There it is. So here's Belmore Farmingdale, uh, and uh, it was warmer there, of course. Um, so let's see what you got there. Yeah, it was warmer during the early part of the day. Actually, dew points were in the upper 50s, and they get looks like they might have gotten up to 80. Uh, we'll put the highs on the map. We'll cover that before we. And you can see here's again. There's that high surf advisory. And we're already seeing high surf already. Let's go look at some buoys right now. Uh, wave heights, uh, five feet, all right. But there is a swell, and that's the point. There is a swell that's going on, and we're already seeing some flooding going on. Of course, News 12, South Shore 12 is all over that because that's affecting those really important people on the South Shore. Uh, so um, let's go look at our highs. And you can see highs generally upper 70s to around 80, uh, generally on Long Island. Except further out east, you had mid-70s, and then in Jersey, you had low 80s. Uh, so a little bit above normal, and the lows, well, they're probably the current temperatures uh, right now. Uh, I'm wondering if West Hampton is radiating yet. Not yet. All right, so anyway, uh, let's talk about Lee. Uh, so let's get the latest on Lee right now. Still a hurricane. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Lee is causing tropical storm conditions in Bermuda. Dangerous Surf and rip currents conditions effect, uh, current conditions affecting much of the east coast of the United States. As of 8 p.m., its location 32.1 north, 68.0 west, about 185 miles west of Bermuda, and about 640 miles south of Nantucket, Massachusetts. Maximum sustained winds are 85 miles an hour, moving north at 15 miles an hour. Minimum social pressure 956 millibars, 28.23 inches. All right. And uh, as far as the mo Lee, Lee is moving toward the north at 15, and the general motion will increase in forward speed uh, through Saturday. A turn toward the north, northeast, and then northeast is forecast Saturday night and Sunday. On this track, the center of Lee will continue to pass west of Bermuda through this evening, approach the coast of New England and Atlantic Canada Friday and Saturday, and move across Atlantic Canada Saturday night and Sunday. Maximum staying winds are near 85 miles an hour. Little change in strength is expected. Through Friday afternoon, and with gradual weakening forecast Friday night through Saturday, but Lee is expected to remain large and dangerous for the next couple of days. 
Lee is a very large hurricane. Hurricane force winds extend out to 105 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend out up to 345 miles from the center. That's incredible. A sustained wind of 43 miles an hour was recently reported at the L.F. Wade International Airport in Bermuda. Um, so that is the latest on Lee, and we'll just briefly get... Well, let's talk about Lee, and then we'll talk about Margaret, though Margaret's not really affecting anyone at this point. Uh, Lee is the storm to watch. Uh, so you see here, and don't be fooled by this warning cone. The effects are going to go beyond even the, where these colors are because we're, gonna have, we're already having high surf. I believe Dune Road in West Hampton Beach has already had flooding. Uh, so this is a huge storm, and it's going to have a lot of coastal flooding. And you can see there's that tropical storm warning. I don't see any hurricane warnings, but there is a hurricane watch in part of Maine and tropical storm watch. Uh, po uh, as well as Nova Scotia with tropical storm watches issued for the other, um, the eastern end of Nova Scotia there. Um, so let's take a look at Lee on the satellite, shall we? You already see it here, uh, but let's go and take a look at it on the satellite. So let's go to this one right here. And there you go. You can see it. Look at that massively. Uh, <laughs> kind of bugging out a little bit there, but uh, you can see here. There's Lee right there, and you can see there's Bermuda right here. So you can see the worst of it's avoiding Bermuda. Uh, and you can see here's Long Island right here. So luckily, it's moving this way and not this way. Uh, but uh, we may, it's questionable whether we'll see that cloud shield or not. Now, I did see it off to the east this evening. I don't know if I showed it to you, but there it is. Um, but uh, there's Lee again, a really uh, impressive-looking storm. Uh, even though it is weakened, it's still extremely impressive. And let's go to the U.S. US Atlantic Coast view so you can get a chance of, to look at Lee here in a, in, a, in a fuller look here. I'll run this to 60 frames. So, and then huge, huge storm right here. Just a huge, huge storm. You can see some of that cirrus uh, starting to maybe head toward us. Uh, but this thing is huge. Look at this thing. I mean, it's incredible. It really is absolutely incredible. Look at this. So that's the outflow. Still healthy. Very healthy looking. You know, it's still got plenty of warm water to maintain its strength. So that's why they, you know, I don't think the strength is really going to change much. Um, and I'm just glad it's not hitting for us. But you'll see that the cape will get in on some of the action for this from this. Um, we'll go to... Let's go to current storms on this, and we'll go ahead and look at the infrared on Hurricane Lee. Not quite as impressive uh, here, but you don't have that really well. You can see how it's starting to get sheared a little bit by that north wind, but there's still plenty of strength for it to work with. Um, so let's go back to the Hurricane Center here. Um, and we're going to go over wind props here. So this is a wind prop. I believe they have a wind prop map, don't they? Um, okay. So we have a couple of maps we want to look at here. Here are the wind speed probabilities. See, not much of an impact with wind for us, maybe a little bit on the forks, but it's it's uh, it's definitely going to be, these are the possibility of tropical storm force winds definitely affecting uh, the Cape and the coast there. Um, looking at our uh, uh, peak surge, this is a map of what the surges can be. It says up to three feet. Uh, I think they're being a little too conservative with some of these storm surges. I think they're going to be higher than that. Um, and then the rainfall potential too. Um, wherever this, wherever this, it looks like the worst of the rainfall is probably going to occur in eastern Maine and into Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada, as far as the amount of rainfall goes. Um, but let's talk about Margaret. Lee, we got to talk about Margaret. And I got back to Lee, obviously. Still watching this area. Obviously, here's Margaret. Uh, and you'll see here, uh, kind of just, they just have it kind of just going in a, in a loop and then uh, kind of looping out here. But Margaret is expected to slowly loop over the north central Atlantic, well west of the Azores as of 9 p.m. This location, 36.9 north, 39.3 west, about 680 miles west of the Azores. Still, maximum stain winds are 80 miles an hour. Still a hurricane, moving northeast at 5 miles an hour. Minimum sunset pressure, 978 millibars, 28.88 inches. 
Uh, and, uh, and again, the hurricane force winds extend out with up to 80 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds extend out with up to 230 miles from the center. Also a rather large storm. Not as large as Lee, but still large. Uh, and then, of course, we have this area right here. But uh, let's go to the weather service site, and you'll see. Let's take a look at their briefing on Lee right now. So this is, again, um, Lee is a Category 1 hurricane. All right. Uh, and... Coastal flood advisories have been issued for the coast Friday night through Saturday night. High tides. Small craft advisories issued for most of the waters for Friday and Saturday. High surf advisory continues for the ocean front through Saturday. Probability of tropical storm force winds continue to be very low, at least in our area, right? Uh, but we have the high surf, and that's the thing that we're going to have to watch out for, those impacts along the shore. Um, and the wind impacts are going to be, you know, mainly to the east, all right? So we're not going to see... Uh, though there could be gusts of 30 to 45 miles an hour Friday night and Saturday on the east end. And due to full foliage, this could cause uh, some po scattered power outages. All right. Um, and no rain for us as far as this goes. All right. It's all going to be to our east, luckily. And luckily, you know, we're dodging the bullet here. Uh, although it's a close shave uh, for sure. Um, we'll just go to the climatology for today. So let's do that. Local past weather. Um, and, yep, we were, uh, let's see, high was 77. Normal high, 76. All right, only one degree above normal on the high. So we're only two degrees above normal for the day. Uh, Central Park, uh, 77, pretty much at normal for the day. And let's go look at Newark, which is probably mu much more above normal than everybody else. 81, yep, two degrees above normal for them, so for the high. So, yeah, warmer for them. But like I said, let's go to, uh, I guess we'll go to some more satellite imagery, I guess. Yeah, I want to go back to satellite imagery. Where did I put it? Here it is. Okay. So, again, here's Lee. And let's see if we can get North Atlantic here. And you can take a look at both of them together. Yeah, here's Lee. You can see that. But there's Lee over here. And here's Margaret over here. So... Got two of them together like that. That's let's run a 60 frame loop. I want to see this. So there's Margaret over there, and there's Lee over there. It's just, just <laughs> it's surreal seeing two hurricanes together like that. It's just nuts. Sometimes you wonder if they're going to do a Fujiwara, but they're just too far apart. I'm afraid to do that. Um, but whatever the case is, let's go to the Kona's view. Look at the satellite loop again, so we can take another look at Lee here. All right, so here's Lee right here. Wow, it's just massive. I'm telling you, it's just massive. It really is massive. Uh, so we're gonna go back to the weather and hazards map now, and uh, see if we can find some more buoy observations a little further south. I don't know if we're gonna be able to. Uh, here's one. Uh, Let's see how, how high the waves are here at this buoy. Uh, yeah, 16.7 feet. That's really impressive. Remember, the storm is all the way over here. So that's really impressive to see, and that's why I think everybody's underestimating. We already have nearly 7-foot waves off the uh, coast of the Delaware right now. Uh, so that's why I think everybody's underestimating how bad this is going to be. This is, again, Wade Airport here. South-southeast wind at 37, gusting to 52. All right. Uh, over there. Um, we don't really have any more buoys that are inside the storm right now, but I think that, again, we'll see those impacts. Let's see, we have another. Let's look at a few more here. Uh, let's see, we got a wave height of nearly 7 feet at this buoy as well. So uh, this is going to come way up uh, by tomorrow. And we're already seeing, again, that coastal flooding. We're already seeing it. Um, and it's been, if you go to, again, if you go to News 12, you know, they're all over it, obviously. As you know, South Shore, but uh, you'll see here, they, that's their lead story, talking about East End rough surf uh, being provided, and they, they show the ocean a little bit in here, too. You'll see uh, what they're dealing with here, uh, the waves. Let's see if they show them. Yeah, so there you go. Um, it's it's up there, and it's going to get worse. Uh, you know, you can see it. It's just starting, all right? But it's going to be worse than Franklin, I think. I mean, look at this thing. Look at how close it is. It's gonna, Franklin was way further out. This thing's going to be way closer, and it's even bigger. So, 
It's true we don't have the lunar high tide, but, you know. Obviously, no need to really look at the models at this point. Uh, we know where it's going, um, but we will look at the models. Let's go to the models now and show you or gfs obviously you see where it's going to go it's going to it's luckily it's it's you know the center of it, it's not going to go as close to the cape as it could uh but i still think the cape is going to have some problems and i think it's going to be hit a little worse than they expected um and you can see it goes into um it looks like it makes a landfall somewhere in extreme e down east maine or i don't know if they call that down east maybe eastern part of maine into nova scotia there that's the gfs all right uh, and then as we head into next week, you'll see that the high builds in. We still have to watch for our, another storm, uh, that might, de that other storm that might develop, but it's just too far. Well, let's do one storm at a time, all right? Uh, so here's the GFS again, and you'll see here, no rain for us. The rain, uh, even the Cape now, the GFS wants to take it a little further east, and that seems to be the track uh, that the Euro was, uh, wrong on. Let's look at the European. Euro is not doing that anymore, so it's pretty much you know, following the GFS. So what did I tell you? That's why I stick with the GFS. It has had a better track record for those people who were freaking out over the European, steering it into us. I knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, uh, but still, this is a tight storm. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's going to have a lot of wind to it, but most of that wind is going to be out over the ocean, but that's going to still cause a lot of tidal impacts uh, and as far as coastal flooding goes. And then the actual wind part of it will be more of an issue, I think, for Maine and Nova Scotia at this point. Um, though, again, tropical storm conditions definitely likely on Cape Cod. So, if, and again, because if we look at the wind field on this, and let's go ahead and look at the wind field, uh, and we'll keep using the GFS at this point, uh, you'll see here that that wind field, uh, definitely you get the, into that tropical storm force wind field, Definitely in uh, the Cape right here. Um, and then look at the, some of these strong winds on the right side of that. Nova Scotia is going to get hammered again. Uh, and like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if if uh, we see at least most of the island lose power in Nova Scotia. Because they have a lot of wood power lines and even the transmission lines. They may have problems as well. Um, but uh, you can see here uh, that is one heck of a storm right there. Uh, still coming in, but luckily, like I said, it's far enough to the east that we are spared the wind impacts from it. All right, uh, should have the H triple R in now, so let's go to the H triple R. Most of the zeros, the H triple R, and out to 38 hours. Okay, so this is one of the more short range models. And the H triple R still is a little different than the GFS, it wants to bring some of the rain into Long Island. You'll see that right there. To Eastern Long Island. That's why I kind of wanted to wait a little bit because we still don't have the full HRRR out yet for this. So let's look at a few other models like the NAM 12. Um, and I should go to the NAM. I have to use the 18Z run for this. Uh, but this is the NAM 12. And you see the NAM's a little more like the GFS. It doesn't have that westward jog like the HRRR seems to have, all right? You can see there's definitely a difference there. And it's a little more over the water again, all right? Um, you can also look at the European model. I think we already did look at the European model. This is the European model. Um, it's still really deep, so it's going to be a pressure gradient. Let's look at the Icon model. So the Icon... The HRRR is the only one taking the rain, so I don't think we're going to see any rainfall on Long Island. I think the rain from it is going to be limited to the Cape. You can see, look at how deep that thing is. That's crazy deep. Crazy deep storm. Let's go to the uh, wind field again. And you'll see here's the wind field. Right there. All right. So let's go back to the GFS. And we are going to look at the waves. Because this is the other thing that we have to watch for. Is significant wave height. All right. And I mean, this is, this is insane. You'll see uh, the worst of it comes in later tomorrow. I think you'll see that. And even into Saturday, and then it starts letting off later Saturday. But again, look at the Cape, uh, and and look at what again, look at what Nova Scotia is going to deal with, and it's all going to funnel in to this bay over here. Uh, this could cause a lot of coastal flooding. This is going to be a devastating storm, uh, just not for us, but it's still going to have significant effects. But the devastation in Maine, uh, and even maybe even parts of Cape Cod and Nova Scotia, Atlantic Canada are going to be absolutely horrific. Uh, as far as the coastal flooding goes, 
Uh, that, that is quite a massive uh, storm surge you have there showing up on this. Massive storm surge. And, there, you know, we can sh show other models, too. I think that'll also show the wave action. So here's the European. All right. And you see, here's the European. You can see, again, that massive amount of storm surge that's going to come in. Uh, you're talking over 30-foot waves crashing in there to the coast of Nova Scotia. That's insane right there. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's not going to be good. Um, so let's talk about our skies here. and We will go back to the HRRR. For, we'll look at the RGEM as well. This is the RGEM. You can see the ring gets spread pretty much into Cape Cod. Um, so let's talk about our skies. All right. So we'll do that. Because that's 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 the tricky part of this forecast here. How far does that Cirrus shield get? The our, our gem has it just over Long Island uh, and has it backing up and has sunny skies over New Jersey for tomorrow. Um, uh, and then that Cirrus shield sort of backs up a little more Saturday. We see a little more of it on Saturday uh, than we see tomorrow. Uh, and then it pulls it out. And then for Sunday, we'll start off with sunshine and then the high clouds come in later in the afternoon. Um... So that's the, that's that model, but every model is different. So let's go to the FV3 or the high resolution GFS. All right, here's the high resolution GFS, and you can see it kind of has it right on the border there. It's so crazy. Here's the regular GFS, the 18Z, and you can see kind of has us right on the line there, literally. So Long Island would have the Cirrus Shield, maybe Jersey wouldn't, um, and then for Saturday we have the Cirrus Shield. Uh, with us and you know it'll be pretty looking serious clouds we usually do get pretty looking serious clouds from tropical systems though for those getting affected there's nothing pretty about it uh so let's go to the HRRR now still at 38 huh I don't know now, and now it wants to be slow usually it's in by almost we're at 10 o'clock already by now uh so here's the HRRR and you can see it brings the rain much further to the west because it brings the center further to the west I, I'm not even buying this at this point I don't know why it's doing that. I'm, I'm not buying that. Um, we'll have to see if this becomes a trend, but like I said, um, I don't think it's going to do that. HRRR is really not the best tropical model to use at this point. Uh, but we can look at the dew points and wind flow on here if you want. Uh, so obviously we have the north winds tomorrow, northeast, north to northeast winds uh, tomorrow. You can see very strong, uh, got, you know, it'll be a strong northerly flow, dry air. And as you get into Saturday, uh, the winds become more northwest to westerly, and that will bring higher temperatures. But again, we don't have the whole model. Of it. It's taking its time coming in tonight for whatever reason, of course, right? Uh, so let's go to the GFS, and we'll go to our temperatures there. So tomorrow will be cooler, I think, because we'll see the cloud cover. So I think yeah, instead of upper 70s, we may have low 70s tomorrow. Uh, be very cool. And then as far as nighttime goes, we'll probably have lows in the 50s. Well, this was the HRRR take the temperatures down to tonight. Yeah, generally 50s. So maybe I'll be able to turn off my air conditioner. Maybe. There's enough of a breeze that can get into the alley. Uh, so anyway, going back to the temperatures here. And we'll come back to the HRRR uh, when it's finished. All right. Uh, GFS, you'll see Saturday will be warmer because we'll be on the more of that northwesterly wind instead of a northerly wind. So I'll probably have upper 70s again. Then Sunday, we warm up closer to 80 degrees. Um, but it's really, uh, we'll get to that when we get to that, you know. Um, let's go and look at a few more models. I'm going to come back to, uh, let's go to the Vent2 Sky site, all right, which does use the HRRR. But we'll go ahead and look at that. And we'll look at wind gusts, all right. So... Let's move this to tomorrow. Start off at 9 a.m. See, again, the wind impacts won't be for us. Um, but let's move it over to 1. Here's the storm. Incredible storm. All right. We're at 3. See, the wind impacts pretty much stay out over the ocean. The worst impacts tomorrow. The Cape will start getting some gales uh, tomorrow afternoon. Um, here we are tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. All right. This is now switched over to the Icon model. Uh, and you can see here, now you're seeing some of those more sustained gusts. Cape Cod, uh, but uh, again, Long Island will 
We may need a gale warning for the east end, perhaps. Remember, this is a large, large hurricane. That's the thing that you have to keep in mind. All right, here we are at 3 o'clock. And you can see that darker area looks like it's going to make its way into the Cape. Uh, 7 o'clock, it is over the Cape, and there's still gusts. I still think that tropical storm warning may need to be upgraded to a hurricane warning. Um, I think, like I said, I think they're being a little too conservative on this because this is a large storm. And then you have the pressure gradient between that and the big the high that's over, uh, over us. So um, let's move this over to 11. And you can see there's that strong wind field. Again, somewhat 79 mile an hour wind gusts. Again, this is something that I think the weather service is being too... The hurricane center is being too conservative with. I really think they should be hurricane warnings, not tropical storm warnings for those air, for at least for the Cape. Uh, and then you can see the Nova Scotia is going to get hammered when this thing gets in here. And Maine as well. It's going to be a disaster. Um, and this doesn't even show the storm surge. We'll have to look at that too. And you can see... Here we are, 10 o'clock uh, for Saturday. We'll move this over to Sunday, show you where this thing goes. It's not really going to be racing northward. It's still going to be in, in the Canadian Maritimes, even on Sunday. Uh, we have to wait for we have to wait for maybe... Uh, yeah, it's just going to sit there. It's barely moving. Here we are, Sunday. It's still in the Canadian Maritimes. So they're still going to... Even though the winds may not be as strong, there's going to be a lot of rain and a lot of flooding problems there. Uh, that, that are going to have to be dealt with as well. Uh, so let's move this back to tomorrow, and we're going to look at the waves, obviously, because this is the this is the other concern that we have as we go into tomorrow here. And, you know, we're looking at various models here. Uh, you can see the waves are already coming up a lot tomorrow morning, and by the evening they're going to get even worse for Long Island uh, and the Cape. And again, in the center of the storm, you can see it's just insane wave heights, I mean, almost 50, 50 footers in the center of this thing, which is absolutely insane. And some of the buoys may pick that up. Um, you can see here, wave heights coming up now to 15 feet. And again, here we are Friday night. Let's move it over to Saturday now, all right? Uh, and you'll see Saturday, maybe it dies down a little bit. Not terrible. It, it, by later in the day, it'll die down a little bit, I think. Uh, but for the Cape, uh, this is where you could have... Yeah, over 15. This is where you're going to have a lot of storm surge flooding. You have that northeast wind that's going to pun. You see how this is shaped like this? It's going to pile the water in into the Cape, and it's going to have nowhere to go. And that's why I'm very concerned about storm surge flooding in the Cape. Um, and you can see, look at these really high waves. And again, look at 35 footers off Nova Scotia Saturday. I mean, that's crazy. That's insane right there. That is cr absolutely crazy stuff. That we're talking about here. I mean, absolutely insane. It really is. Um, so, uh, th this is the kind of disaster that we have that's going to be unfolding. Uh, now, let's try to get the HRRR again. And we'll see if we can get the latest now. It's still not. It's stuck at 38. I don't know what's going on. There's something wrong. Oh, finally. All right, finally it loaded. Okay, so here we go. Looking at the HRRR. And you can see it does bring some rain into Long Island here on Saturday. I don't know if I'm buying that. Um, um, but you can see, look at that big... That, that it's going to affect a whole big area of New England. Uh, it's it's going to be a big, big storm to uh, you know, uh, look out for, for sure. Um, let's go back to the Ventu Sky here. Um, so we can also use Ventu Sky for clouds. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go to tomorrow morning here. Um, Show you the cloud shield, and again, you can see here we are, 5 a.m. You can see cloud shields over Long Island. It kind of tries to spread westward into New Jersey. Honestly, it's it's going to be a tough call for this. Um, if you're in western New Jersey, you might have sunshine. It, it's going to be a rather interesting-looking sky tomorrow, I think, for sure. The clouds do win out by the afternoon, though, I think. Uh, and we'll have those clouds. And then Saturday, uh, we should also see those clouds around as well. Uh, this is, again, the uh, icon in each triple R cloud output. Uh, so, yeah, we're not done yet. Now we've got to go to the windy.com model. All right. Let's go over here. Look at wind gusts. And we'll move this over here so you just visualize this is the European model. So this is the European model here. And you can see it stays pretty strong. And it actually has some of the more of the gusts up to 30 over Long Island. You can see definitely... Uh, tomorrow, already, by the evening, you're going to have gusts close to 50 on Cape Cod. Uh, and then, let's get this over here. Uh, so, 
Cape Cod, but it, it makes its closest approach to Cape Cod probably sometime Saturday morning. Or Saturday, the early part of Saturday. Here you go, gust up to 64. It's not as as strong as the, um, I guess that was the icon. But still, it's a big storm, and I really think a hurricane warning. If we wanted at least for the outer cape. Um, and I think it needs to be upgraded. Um, and you see this thing coming. The Nova Scotia, the Yara is actually weaker than some of the other models. And I think that's actually wrong. So I think it's actually going to be stronger uh, than that. So... And the Euro has not been very reliable, so that's why I don't really like using it. And I haven't used it much because we've had a lot of issues with it. Uh, but here, let's look at the visualize the waves. Again, I do like this visualization here uh, from the wave output. And again, here we are. Even the night, you're seeing those waves come up. And uh, we'll show you Long Island here. It comes up, and you can see it's uh, that that red color. That aren't red color is really getting close. Unless tomorrow night, I think it's going to peak. And then by Saturday, by Saturday afternoon, it dies down. But Saturday morning could still be pretty rough. Uh, but by Saturday afternoon, it kind of dies down. Uh, and then you can see here, again, the Cape. Let me move this over to where the Cape is on Saturday. Yeah, this is going to be bad. And again, look at south of Nova Scotia. Some of these waves are going to be absolutely nuts. Uh, absolutely nuts. It's going to be very, very bad flooding. Uh, so like I said, some of the worst, I think some of the worst uh, storm surge that uh, this air part of New England has seen in quite some time. Uh, so just go looking at the clouds, the cloud output, this is for tomorrow. You see they have the Cirrus over us. And honestly, I think the Cirrus shield will be over us. It's hard to say, but we'll know by the morning how much of it we'll have over us. Um, you can see there it moving in to uh, the Gulf of Maine. So this is... Uh, going to be a major disaster. I'm praying for everybody in its, in its wake. Things are going to be rough. Uh, we're only going to have to deal with some clouds and rough surf and coastal flooding, which still could be significant. Uh, but uh, the real destruction is going to be taking place uh, in this area here from the Cape all the way into um, Maine and Nova Scotia. So that's the area that's going to be hit. And we will be watching the uh, as it as it as it as it makes its landfall, well, it's, it's uh, as it comes close to Cape Cod on Saturday, uh, but then as it makes its landfall Saturday night into Maine. So that's going to wrap up this weather update. Oh, am I? Yeah, we're done. All right, so that's going to wrap up this weather update. Have a good night.